All right, so this time we'll have a look at how to set this character up. Uh, this is one of the example files for uh, Auto Rig Pro. Uh, I think it's like the most sold item on the uh, Blender Marketplace. Uh, I just reset the the pose, and uh, I, I wasn't able to get the knee to or get the, the leg to restore its shape. But <laughs> this is what we've got to work with. And uh, just so I show you the sort of the final result, uh, which is going to be this. Uh, so it's a, a combination of um, well the the a new addition which is to uh, merge two solvers together, uh, along with obviously setting the character up as well. So it's not that different from uh, setting any other character up. Uh, it's not that different from the uh, advanced character setup video, like the previous video uh, with the, uh, the default Blender asset. Uh, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go through the steps and see, uh, you know, and see where we get to. And then we'll, uh, we'll append the same character twice and get this double character uh, and then we'll merge the solvers so that they uh, interact with each other. So without further ado, let's clear this scene and we'll start from scratch. And there you have it. So this is the uh, the, fo the file that after you open it, it's sort of in, in, this, uh, in this pose when you open it. So I found that I can uh, select everything and reset uh, the pose. So I think it's called clear uh transforms is that it yeah that's it okay i'll just have a hotkey for it so this is what we got to start with and it has uh you know it has uh, ik arms and ik legs we'll work with that as well and uh you know you can see the, the ik things happening here uh so let's get started so i'm going to select the uh the root which appears to be this controller and work my way up the spine all the way up to the neck and assign and connect that gives us the first chain and the first hierarchy. From here, I'm going to go from the torso out into the clavicle. And, and here we actually need to unhide the IK joints because I don't want to assign to this controller, which is, appears to be some sort of twist controller. And I don't want to assign to the pole vector because uh, we want to rotate around the elbow. We don't want to rotate from, from over here. And, uh, and then we're going to assign to the, the, end, the end effector of the hand. So I found that on this armature, I can go to the armature, uh, the bone connections. And as one of these, so if I go into uh, wireframe, it's gonna be one of these. And it looks like, it looks like this is the FK bones and this is the IK bones. We can confirm that by now moving the IK and we should see that these bones are moving along with it. There's even an extra bone here that I'm not sure what it's for, but we're not gonna assign to this because clearly it's not, uh, it's not moving. So we wanna assign to the things that move. That's the, the general rule. Uh, so in fact, we might need to hide this one just so we don't accidentally select it. So if I just go here and maybe I can, uh, can I hide it? Yeah, there we go. We'll do the same thing for the other one just so that we avoid accidentally selecting it. There we go. So now we can select the, uh, the IK bones. Those are the ones we want to assign to. So after I reset the hands, uh, it, it helps if the character is symmetrical because then we'll we'll get symmetrical edits in Rydal as well. So now from the torso, clavicle, first IK bone, second IK bone, and then the hand. I'm gonna include the fingers as well. So I may as well include the center finger just to get the default hierarchy looking neat. Assign and connect, so there we, ha there, there we go. Now we have the torso, uh, clavicle and arm out into the first finger. We can add the, the other fingers as well. Just repeat the last command. There we go, and there we go, and there we go. So now we have all fingers covered. I'll repeat this process for the second arm, clavicle, first, second, hand, and the first finger. The controls are a bit different here, something like that. Second finger, third finger, fourth, finger and last but not least the thumb okay there we go uh, and that is the upper body let's continue down the the leg so from the hip this time upper lower and then um, I guess we can pick the uh, we can pick this box for a foot uh, and then we can probably pick the uh, this controller here no see this is the this is like a, a reverse foot controller so we can't really assign to this because it will rotate the, the leg rather than the toes. 
It looks like the toe controller is this one over here. Okay, great. So hip, upper, lower, the foot control, and then this toe control. Uh, you generally want to assign to the things that you're going to animate, like the things that you would normally keyframe, which is in this case, I would, I would keyframe this one and I would keyframe the uh, the toe controller because Ragnall is going to set keyframes on these two. Uh, next, the next leg, there we go, upper, lower, the foot control and the toe control and assign and connect. There we go. So now we have everything is, uh, is assigned. Uh, the one thing remaining before we can actually record is to retarget the IK bones back onto the pole vector. Uh, actually, that's the only thing we need to retarget because the, the hand is assigned to the IK end factor. So if I hit play now, we should see something. If I go back to the start frame, okay, it was using a preview range. There we go. So that looks fine. It's, uh, it's holding up. Uh, next, we need to tune some shapes. So let's uh, let's do that. Go into object mode and into ragdoll manipulator mode. We don't need to see this. And now we can start tuning these shapes just to fit the character a little bit better. Something like this. Uh, here we can use symmetry to work on both sides at the same time. Something like this. And for the head, it's quite large. And it's tilted slightly. Something like this. Legs a little bit bigger. Just gotta pause my <laughs> exercise counter. There we go. And there we go. And for the legs, um, for the legs, I'm gonna make these. Well, let's start with keeping them as capsules, so just so you can see why that is problematic and then I'm going to convert them to boxes to show you the solution. Okay, that looks fine. So now if I hit play, well rather actually let's do the hand as well, which is a bit big. And this one, that one, match the geometry. It's a bit smaller. All right, we had symmetry so we're good on both sides. And there we go. So now we have a character, and it looks like the uh, the feet are intersecting with the ground. Uh, but, but this illustrates uh, one of the issues. So you see how now that the the feet are inside the ground, the ground is going to push them up. Uh, but as a result, the the legs will start to twist. So it's like he's twisting his ankles as soon as he lifts off the ground. Uh, and this is uh, this the same applies if I were to take the uh, take the character and just drop him to the ground so now when he falls when he falls down <laughs> it's actually quite well balanced let's go back into shaded and okay it's falling very slowly let's start by setting the frame rate on this guy because i think we're playing back at 60 fps and then we can decrease our stiffness on the root uh, on the group rather. Now he's a lot more relaxed. Uh, and here you can see that as soon as he relaxes, his feet sort of uh, bend all the way to the side because I mean they're round feet, so they, they will they will roll effortlessly side to side, and we don't really want that because feet are supposed to be well. The feet is balancing, like the, the whole character is balancing on these feet. So let's turn these into boxes so that they get a little more stability and uh, you can even make them quite thick you know almost wider like the wider you make them the more stable obviously will <laughs> the standing pose will be uh, but keeping it to the model is generally safe something like this and maybe a little bit rotated something like this okay that looks good so uh, so now oh it looks like we didn't have symmetry in this case the second box, something like this. Oh, that looks fine. Uh, so now, when the character uh, falls to the ground, he's not gonna he's not gonna tilt his feet. They're they're gonna be flat, just like the real model. All right, but obviously we don't have any limits yet, so he's gonna he's gonna collapse in on himself. Let's um, let's address that right now by just making him a bit more tense. I don't want to deal with limits in this particular example. 
Now he's just going to stick to the uh, the depots a bit more closely, which uh, works well. And uh, I think there we go. So I think the, uh, maybe the hip really shouldn't be uh, straight like this. Maybe we can make this flat as well. And uh, at this point, we can move the solver to the side to get a better look at what we're what we're doing. Okay, so that looks pretty decent. Um, at this point, we, we cannot record just yet, because it will try and record onto the IK bones. Uh, so the second thing to do is to head in, oh, actually back into the solver. And at the at the bottom here, you have the, the retargeting section. And one of the things we should find is that the, uh, da, 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 the IK arm bones are not going to be... Uh, if I lock this panel... Now I can start selecting things, and what I want to select is the IK bones. So there's a lot of interesting names here. Let's find the ones that are IK. Uh, that looks to be one. If we look in the viewport, we can see these are the ones being selected. So for the upper arm, we don't want to record the upper arm at all, uh, because the upper arm is driven by the pole vector. So I'm going to untarget the upper arm. I'm going to untarget the lower arm, and for the or sorry, the you know both the upper arms on both sides. <laughs> for the um, the lower arm, which is there we go, forearms. I want to retarget the uh, left forearm onto the left pole vector. So if I select the uh, if I select this pole vector along with the lower arm, actually can I? Uh, let's do this from the let's do it from the manipulator. I select the pole vector uh, and then we go add all and retarget and then we can select the um, pole vector and hit enter and now we can see that this marker is retargeted to the pole vector. So now when we record this marker right here is going to be setting keyframes onto the pole vector. So far so good. So the next is the same thing. I'm going to select this one. Repeat. Uh, I cannot repeat. Edit and retarget, select the uh, pull vector, and there you go. Uh, same thing for the legs, because the legs are also driven by IK. So the legs, the lower legs, this one, we can retarget this one as well to this pull vector, and the other leg to the other pull vector. For the upper legs, we don't want to. Uh, record anything to you. You're going to be uh, completely unrecorded, on target, and on target. There we go. So now we have the, the upper arm on both sides and the upper leg on both sides are not going to get any keyframes. And then the keyframes for the lower arm are going to go to the pole vectors. So at this point, I expect recording to work just fine. Let's uh, confirm. If I go right, actually, let's reduce the, the frame just so we don't have to record all the way. And um, this is fine. Let's give it a try. All right, that looks fine. So we got the uh, the characters falling over and uh, the pull vectors, other things, getting animation uh, assigned to them. Actually, it looks like the uh, it looks like the pull vectors on this side is not getting the right motion. It looks like it's getting some sort of double transformation. So this is Marcus from the future. Uh, I had a look at this and uh, it looks like the uh, there's an option for the pole vectors to follow the hip. And so when they are recorded and they have animation to, to sort of move down, they, they double up with the motion from the hip as well. So that really is a bug on our part. We should fix that. But to work around it right now, uh, I found an option here, pole parent, to make them not follow the, uh, the hip. Uh, and that will uh, properly make them follow the recorded animation. Um, all right, in any case, uh, we're done with this character now. I'm not gonna assign limits this time, just to keep the uh, to keep it a bit simpler. But if I now save this scene, let's call it uh, Mike save version one. Uh, and then in a new scene, we can now do a append and we can go uh, and find the one we just saved, which is Mike saved. Uh, and actually, there's one thing left that we forgot, which is to put everything in the same collection, because as soon as you append something, you need to append a collection. So let's, uh, let's reopen this one. And uh, in this case, we just want to put everything that belongs to the character in the same collection. Uh, we can either move everything into Ragdoll or Ragdoll into it. 
uh, or we can just make a new make a new collection and uh, we'll call this uh, the rig and inside this rig we're gonna put everything uh, including the ground please um, there we go there we go so now we can save this file and then in a new file with nothing we can go append we can find our saved and we can go the rig this point it will be the uh, the exact same scene that we had uh, because we just imported it uh, and in fact i think we can also um well let's uh, let's get both of them in and then i'm going to remove the animation on the character as well because we don't need because uh, we recorded onto the controls but we don't really need that uh, let's, let's go one more time to append there we go and pick the same character the rig uh, and now we have two duplicates and uh I play, I mean, you're not really going to see any difference because they're going to be identical. So let's take um, one of them and uh, you know, this group controller, for example, move this up. So now we have uh, two copies. But as we can see, they are, uh, they are not interacting with each other because they both have their own solvers. And the solver is essentially the scene, the, uh, the world in which the physics calculations happen. So if I look inside the uh, Ragdoll collection, at the bottom we have the solver for the top one uh, and if I then select the solver for the bottom one as well now we have both selected first one and second one uh, I can now go right all edit and under solver you have a merge solvers and that will just move all the uh, markers from one solver into the second uh, which is this one right here uh, and from here you can see that now they are in the same uh, world they're interacting with each other so there you go, now you have the simulation uh, of two characters interacting with each other and now when I hit record we expect that to be applied to both of them. And at this point if we uh, hit play we see both of them are playing back. We can now hide all of Ragdoll, we don't really need to see that anymore. Hide, hide, and we're left with just the, the two characters being uh, keyframed into having this uh, uh, pleasant interaction with each other. <laughs> All right, uh, that covers it for this, uh, this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed and I'll uh, see you next time.